Hey guys, today we're back with the Carl Johan in World of Warships, and the reason I'm back with this ship, I think there's some things you guys gotta consider before thinking about buying this ship in the next patch. I probably made it look a little better than it actually was in the first impressions on Monday this week, so I gotta just warn you guys and maybe offer a bit of a comparison. What does this ship do differently than the Ruprecht at Tier 9? It's got more guns at a lower caliber, but worse dispersion. Uh, its armor is slightly better. The HP pools aren't that different, um, but its torpedoes do less damage, although they do go a little farther and they have much faster speeds, but both have a lot of torpedo tubes. They both have the option to run a secondary build that nearly match its concealment range. So you have this really powerful ship that is almost always able to make use of those secondaries. And even though the Ruprecht has slightly worse concealment, those secondaries do reach out quite a bit farther. They also are able to pen much more and have higher DPM, better accuracy as well. So if you're thinking of getting this ship and you already have a Ruprecht, you can think of it as a bit of a Ruprecht in a different tech tree. But there isn't much benefit to having a European battleship, at least right now, since we don't actually have a European battleship line that you might be training a commander for. And considering the playstyle is pretty similar to a Ruprecht, you can do a lot of the things that I'm going to do in this game and in the previous games in a Ruprecht. Just something to consider. I'm not trying to convince you to not buy this ship because it is pretty fun. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but that sort of enjoyment and the similar playstyle is possible in a ship that's currently available as a silver ship, right? You don't have to pay doubloons to get that thing. Just something to consider. The other thing is the way the game is played these days. This match, we are in an arms race game, and we're against some tier 10s. There's a carrier and a sub here. Sub is on our flank. We're kind of trying to run him down. I'm kind of missing my ASWs here, unfortunately. And we're four minutes into this game, and I'm already on the enemy's half of the map. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, people really don't want to play the game these days, guys. So something you'd real Nice, we got the sub. Oh, I was so happy to see that when I was in this game going to allow us to push up even more if we want to. But this is a bit of an issue with World of Warships these days, is people are just so terrified to play the game that they sit in spawn. In fact, they're usually farther back than where they actually spawn. They've actually turned around, uh, which is just insane to me. Um, not sure why people are playing the game. Instead, maybe watch a YouTube video or I don't know, something else. But this is just not playing the game to me, at least. Uh, I don't want to be too hard on these players specifically. This is just a general problem with the player base these days, I would say. So if you're going to get a Carl Johan and you're wanting to push up and brawl, it's not going to really happen in random battles. We're going to push out here. It's suicidal. They have most of their tier 10s here. Every tier 10 is here except for the enemy Moskva. That was it. Everything else was over here and the other sub, but, you know, we already dealt with one of those. We're gonna push a Montana, we're gonna push a Yoshino, we're gonna push a Yamato, for DC. There's even a Kerr first all the way at the back. Uh, there are carriers here, there's an Iowa here. We're gonna send it in because you know me, I'm just trying to play the game and get these brawls in. And we're gonna do a lot of damage here. So again, this ship is very, very strong in these close quarters scenarios. Especially the secondaries getting a ton of fires. Uh, it's really, really strong. You're going to see that right at the end of this game with the end score, how much damage we actually do get done. The main guns are a little disappointing. This build is, of course, that full secondary build. I have tried it with the main guns build, finally. Uh, it's a little awkward considering it's going to get nerfed uh, to 25 second reload base instead of uh, 23 seconds that it is now. So I actually just left off the reload mod. I didn't take anything in slot 6 when I tried the main gun build. And it was alright, but the guns were very RNG based as they are with this full secondary build and I'd, I'd prefer to just run it in like this and then use that concealment to secondary range it's basically the same uh, to get a lot of damage out of that already up to 112 a thousand damage here and uh, counting it's just <laughs> pretty fun to send this ship in and this is where I think the armor is a pretty big benefit over the Ruprecht I think the Ruprecht probably dies here a little quicker Although, keep in mind, uh, we're on a double permanent fire right now, and the Rubric would have its damage control back a little bit sooner. Unfortunately, we aren't actually doing any damage to this broadside Lexington, which is pretty annoying. 
but that was a pretty fast 160,000 damage, wasn't it? We actually managed to flood out that enemy Yamato and nearly killed that Montana. So the YOLO plays can work out really, really well. I think the ship is going to be awesome in ranked. It might lose to a Ruprecht, though. Um, let's say you find yourself in a 1v1 against a Ruprecht on a flank. I think it might actually lose to that. Ruprecht has those fast-acting damage controls to deal with the fires that this ship is going to rely on setting. Uh, and you're going to take a lot of full pen damage from a Ruprecht if he's running IFHE on those secondaries, which is pretty likely. And then he has Torps to match your torpedoes. So at the end of the day, if you get really close, it does end up being a trade, most likely. Team does finish off the Monty, which feels pretty good. Of course, we're going to win this one. Um, the enemy team didn't really play, unfortunately. And this is just very, very common these days. And it's pretty disappointing uh, to see the game in such a state here. And I don't know, man. I don't know. Ranked, ranked is where you got to go. Try and get to tier 9 ranked. That way you don't have to deal with the carries and subs, guaranteed. A few people still bring the hybrids, which is pretty sad. But most of the time, it's going to be a good experience. And you won't have to push to the enemy spawn just to get a little bit of action. Uh, there's that fire damage, as you can see. And floods, sorry. There's also floodings in that one as well. But it's pretty powerful with the dots. As for the build on this thing, I was still running that full secondary build. I just enjoy that one the most. But a hybrid build would work out as well, I think. Um, relying on these main guns is a little awkward thanks to their just normal battleship dispersion and 1.8 Sigma. Uh, having conceal is just beautiful with these secondaries. 10.5 secondary range, 10.6 conceal. Though, pretty much always going to make use of that. Brisk has been great, although the turrets could use a little help at times in these brawls. They're not they're decently quick. They're decently quick. 30 seconds, 180 degree turn time. It's okay. But sometimes it would be nice to have the turrets come around just a little bit quicker, especially uh, considering the low caliber on these guns as well. Gun feeder is great for a ship that has low caliber guns like this, and 28% fire chance is no joke. Although, uh, I haven't had the best luck with setting fires with the main guns. Secondary build looked like this, uh, although when I was running it with the main gun build, like I mentioned, um, this ship is getting a nerf to its main gun reload to 25 seconds base when it comes out. So, instead of running main battery mod 3 like I would here, or the main gun build, I did some. You would do something like this if you wanted to do more main gun focused. Uh, the reload gets a little too good, right? So all I did was remove this, and then it's slightly worse than what a full main gun build will be in the future, but it's a little bit closer, I would say. I'm not giving it too much of an advantage before it gets nerfed down. I didn't really enjoy this build as much since we now reduce our secondary range to 9.2 kilometers. It's still usable. Um, but <laughs> people don't push into you, man. Uh, you gotta go to the enemy spawn to get any action these days. Um, as far as this comparison, right, the Ruprecht is, is the key one here. I, I don't know, man. It's so close. It's something that I didn't really consider in those first impressions. Uh, and I probably should point that out to you guys before this thing actually, before the, uh, Johan actually comes out. Guns are higher caliber. You get battle cruiser dispersion table instead of the battleship dispersion table. A little more accurate. Uh, these secondaries do pen 32 millimeters with IFHE, although the fires go down. But that raw pen is just so useful. Torpedoes, a little worse range, uh, worse reload, but the damage is up. And uh, the speed is much lower, though, too. It's something to consider. It is easier to land these torpedoes at those uh, longer ranges, I would say. Don't do quite as much damage, but they're still very, very strong. AA looks to be a strength, but anytime I've been against a carry, I've just been absolutely destroyed destroyed so uh it's not gonna go too well for you speed's decent keep in mind we do have brisk here and that's really about it for this ship um yeah armor wise i did show you guys that earlier it's nice armor to have this when you're angled and against he but i found it just eats full pens from battleships uh this is just guaranteed to arm battleship shells even if you're not taking citadels it is painful if you're miss angling and as I mentioned in the first impressions, this is definitely a shot trap. <laughs> it hurts when you're kiting uh, to have that very weak point there to just allow shells to come in. Uh, Ruprecht looks pretty similar, um, although these extremities are 27. So you do get overmatched a little more in this ship. At least if you do go very angled in the Yohan, you will be able to auto bounce most battleships at this tier even have a bit of an icebreaker as well, which is quite nice. It's it's a good ship, man. It is it is a really good ship, a lot of fun. I think it's going to do very well in ranked. 
It's just a little rough in random battles. Battleships already should probably be playing at the back of the map, considering how easily they get farmed these days. So playing a ship that wants to push in to really have any sort of enjoyment or see its strengths at all is a bit rough these days. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, if you do end up getting this ship when it comes out, let me know how it's going for you. Uh, personally, I think this will be relegated to ranked at tier 9 for me. Uh, if I do end up playing it, random battles is just... I mean, I got to push the enemies, like I got to get in the enemy spawn to actually play the game, really. Uh, it's just so sad. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.